Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to write our own provider that is going to provide here to the application component this dependency, the courses service dependency. Remember, the goal of this exercise is to understand how dependency injection works under the hood. Usually we don't need to write our own providers by hand, they are automatically generated by Angular. The goal here is to understand how dependency injection works under the hood and also to become aware of all the configuration options that we have. Let's then start writing our provider. As we have discussed, our provider is simply a function that we need to pass to the Angular dependency injection system and that function is going to be called by the dependency injection system and it's going to provide the dependency that is needed. So in this case, we want to create a function that returns a courses service. This function then needs to call here the new constructor on courses service and it needs to provide it its own dependencies. The dependency that we need here is the HTTP client. So that's what we need to pass in here. Let's say that this HTTP client comes from a parameter that we pass to the provider function. So if we add it here, we will have completed the implementation of our provider function. As you can see, it's simply a function, it returns a courses service and it calls the constructor. That's simply what the provider is. Now the question is how is the caller of this function going to get the HTTP dependency? Well, let's remember that this is the dependency injection system, so it will have the missing dependency, the HTTP client, and it will be able to pass it here to this function. What we need to do now is to plug this function here in the Angular dependency injection system. There are multiple ways of doing that. We're going to be using here, in this case, the provider's property of the component annotation. We are going to define here at the level of this component a provider for courses service. Now if we just take here our function and we pass it here in the providers array, we are going to get a compilation error. And this is normal because the provider function by itself is not sufficient for making here this dependency to work. Instead of passing the function directly, we need to pass in a configuration object. And in this configuration object, we are going to define at the level of the dependency injection system what exactly are we providing. This means that we need to give our courses service dependency a name, a dependency injection unique name. This unique name of the dependency is known as an injection token. So let's define here one. We are going to give it a name. We are going to call it courses service. This is the name of the unique dependency dependency injection token associated to the courses service dependency and we are going to instantiate the token. We are simply going to call the constructor of this type that is provided by Angular. It's called injection token. So the injection token is a unique identifier for a dependency. Each dependency has its own unique injection token. The injection token takes a parameter type and this is the type of the dependency being injected. So we are going to add here courses service, that's the dependency linked to this dependency injection token. Now in the constructor we need to pass in here a string. This is a unique string that uniquely identifies this dependency. We are going to call it courses underscore service. Now that we have here our dependency injection token, we can now configure the dependency injection system. We are going to say that we are going to provide the dependency for this token. So with this we have uniquely identified the dependency that we are configuring and now we just just need to pass in our provider function. In order to pass in the provider function, we need to populate here this use factory property. We are going to cover the other properties too. This is the one that we need to use to pass this function to the Angular dependency injection system. So as you can see, our code is now compiling correctly. So let's review what we did here. In order to solve this error, we need to pass a function to the dependency injection system so that Angular knows how 
to create a courses service. That's what's going on here. We have created here our provider function that simply creates the dependency that is needed here in the constructor. Each dependency in the dependency injection system needs to have a unique name. So we have created one here. This is known as an injection token. The injection token is like a unique identifier for a dependency. So after having here the dependency identifier and after having here the factory function, we have then informed Angular how to create a course service by specifying these two things, the unique token for the dependency and the factory function that Angular can call in order to get here a course service. And with this, we have here our first attempt of writing our own provider. So if we now try this out, we are going to notice that we still get here an error, can't resolve all parameters for courses service provider. So the dependency injection system at this point, it's trying to call the factory function in order to create the courses service. That's what it's trying to do. But the problem is that it does not know how to get here this HTTP dependency. Angular cannot inspect the parameters of the function and determine what dependencies are needed. Instead, we need to provide here the dependencies ourselves. We need to use here another property called dependencies. So this is an array that is going to take here the multiple dependencies needed by the courses service provider function. In this case, we need here the HTTP client. So if we now try this out with the dependency field in, we are going to see that we get a different error. So we no longer have here the same error mentioning that we did not know how to fetch this dependency here. Instead, we get again the same error that we saw initially, no provider for courses service. But we just wrote a provider and we know that the dependency injection system can call it with the HTTP dependency and get the dependency. So what is going on here? It's very simple. What's going on is that here there is no way for Angular to link this request here for a courses service instance to this particular injectable that we have configured here. Here in the constructor, we are just asking here for an instance of courses service, but we are not saying anywhere that we need the dependency linked to this unique injection token. Let's remember the injection token is what uniquely identifies the dependency and that's what we need to use in order to get a dependency. We need to request it via its injection token. In order to identify the correct injection token, we are going to add here an extra decorator. It's called at inject. And here inside the decorator, we are going to specify the name of the injection token that we need. We need to do this here at the level of the application component class. And we also need to do it here at the level of the course card component. So we have exported here our courses service injection token. So if we now switch here to the course card component, we are going to again apply the inject decorator and we are going to specify that we want the courses service injection token. With this in place, we are now ready to try out our application. And this time around, everything is working again as expected. So with this provider that we wrote here manually, we managed to inject the courses service everywhere that it was needed. Let's now quickly summarize everything that we learned in this lesson. So as we know, the dependency injection system is what allows Angular to inject the dependencies here in the constructor. Every dependency has internally an injection token, which is like an unique identifier for the dependency and a provider factory function that is called in order to create the dependency. Even when we don't write these things ourselves, Angular is applying some defaults and it's doing exactly that under the hood. It's creating either an injection token implicitly or it's creating a provider function implicitly. We are just not aware of it directly, but that's what's going on under the hood. After configuring the Angular dependency injection system with a provider, like we have done here, we then need to specify whenever we need a dependency, what is the injection token that we need. Notice that before our version of the application was much simpler. We didn't have here a provider function. We didn't know about injection tokens and we didn't have to write our own providers or specify the injection token. Let's go back step by step from this more 
more complex example to that simplified scenario and understand how Angular is making the dependency injection work under the hood. This is coming right up in the next lesson.